When we wake, hear the birds and see the sun. Side by side, our fears are done. Oh, the good times just begun. Day four of our trip covered 507 kilometers from Happy Valley Goose Bay up to Northwest River and eventually making it to Cartwright. As always, we hit the road pretty early and our first stop wasn't very far. We just had to get to the airport, which is on a military base. Now I do have to admit that just driving onto a military base doesn't feel right, but it is Canada, so it eh, must be fine. And we did want to check out a piece of aviation history. What a beautiful bird. That's what she said. <laughs> wow. I wish I could have seen one fly in person because that just that noise. Yes, sadly, there are fewer than 20 Vulcans left in existence and none of them remain airworthy. So it's highly unlikely that I'll ever hear that distinctive howl in person and I'll never see one fly, but being able to touch one was kind of cool. Also on display are a CF-101 Voodoo, the second one that we've seen on this trip, and a PBY Canzo water bomber. Cool looking thing. Oh yeah, <laughs> like a boat. Hi, bye, birdie. Now sidetracked by one last look at the Avro Vulcan, I wasn't really paying attention to traffic laws. Ah. Yeah. Wrong way. Avoiding any accidents, we looped around the airport terminal in the right direction this time and headed through the base. Again, it doesn't feel right just aimlessly riding around a military base. I was honestly getting pretty nervous that I was leading us somewhere we really shouldn't be. I mean, it's a four-wheeler trail. But what's the worst that could happen? Get shot on sight? Or the more likely Canadian scenario of being politely asked to leave? We received neither and made our way around the end of the runway, following a dirt road up to the top of Dome Mountain. Well, that view was worth it, huh? Look at all that fog, rain. Yes, rain would become a theme for this day. And since we couldn't take in the views, we headed back down the mountain and north to Northwest River. Here, we could take in some shelter from the rain and learn about Labrador culture at the Labrador Interpretive Center. We ended up having the whole place to ourselves and Reg, who was working there, was more than happy to show us around and share his own experiences of living in Labrador. We could have chatted with the Interpretive Center staff forever, but unfortunately, because we had so far to go that day, we started heading south, making a quick stop to check out the old Sky Tram system, which was the only way to cross the river prior to the bridge being constructed in the 1980s. Hey, puppy! You just hanging out? You live here, bud?
the old Hudson, Hudson's Bay Company building. Yeah. Yeah. So that wouldn't have been the building for 1670. Now just to clarify a little, that building was not built in 1670. The Hudson's Bay Company was incorporated in 1670 and they set up in this area in the 1800s. That building is as it would have been in 1920 and we would have known all of this had we actually gone inside and, you know, actually read something. Good, okay, thank you. In retrospect, we could have spent another day between Happy Valley, Goose Bay, Shoshashui, and the Northwest River. We also didn't have time to check out the military museum in Goose Bay, which I would have liked to have seen. And I don't think we even stepped foot on the Happy Valley side of town. Oh well, just gives us more reason to go back someday. Thank you. Before leaving Goose Bay, we had to fill up our fuel tanks and our giant lube armadillo bags for the roughly 400 kilometers between stops. Stop. Do a mine first, yours first. Is this? Yeah, yeah, so it doesn't slip. They're a little tricky to fill for the first time. Hold it. It'll, it'll, all right. As it fills, it'll... Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, she's tricky. Sorry. No problem. And now to make use of the ridiculous number of straps that I carry. And I'll show you how rock straps work. And here's where I keep assorted lengths of wire. Whoa. Two. You should buy a couple. Let me show you some of the different lengths of wire I use. I'm the one holding this up. Seriously, rock straps are awesome. The loaded fuel bag didn't budge. So we were all set for the road, and leaving town, we forgot to get a picture of the Happy Valley Goose Bay sign. Oops. And after heating the sign and making sure that we had enough fuel, we crossed the sketchiest bridge of the whole trip. I don't know what the spacing is on those crates, but the knobby tires just did not like it. It's one hell of a view though. This section of the Translab Highway really is a long haul. It's almost 300 kilometers of nothing but wilderness before finally seeing the turnoff for Cartwright. In order to entertain ourselves on this long and at times monotonous road, we had decided on a challenge of restraint. We agreed to keep our speed between 90 and 100 to see just how far we could make it on our regular tank of fuel. Cruising at a buck thirty like the day before definitely wouldn't get us close to Cartwright. And an added bonus to riding like reasonable adults was that the KLR didn't need any oil the following morning. We only stopped once for a break on this basically empty stretch of highway, and at that time we decided that due to the almost constant rain, and still being a little grumpy from the hailstorm the day before, we would check for a hotel once we made it to Cartwright. The weather really was beating us, but it did start to clear up a bit before we finally made it to the Paradise River Bridge, our last planned stop of the day before turning off the Trans Labrador Highway and heading north to Cartwright.
Turning onto the road to Cartwright, you quickly get the feeling that this is what the Trans-Labrador Highway used to be. Just a dirt road through the woods with nobody around for miles. We got to see the once infamous Trans-Labrador graders. We made it into town with the KLR well into reserve and I had been staring at the CB500X's low fuel light for the better part of an hour. But we made it to the gas station. 392 kilometers on a tank. I don't think the bikes would have seen 393. The only hotel in town only had seven rooms and they were full. So we tried to have a meal at the pub in the basement. But the lady playing a VLT said that she had just shut down the kitchen. I wonder if she meant the three barbecues outside. In the end, it all worked out as we found the best campsite of the whole trip, but we'll cover that in the next episode. A new place, a new home, for a while, let me feel alive. Nothing to hold me back, take my time, just enjoy the ride. No man passing by, life is good, best I've ever felt. 